Hello, my name is Lewis Talley and welcome to this video from InSource Productions, where today we will be talking about using GR Access for object automation, deployments and undeployments. Before we begin, let's talk about what GR Access is. GR Access is part of the toolkit library that includes various APIs and SDKs for different products. We'll be focusing on one, GR Access, which is an API or Applications Programming Interface for the Orchestra Integrated Development Environment. This can be downloaded from the Tech Support website. It should be noted that it does require an Advanced Development Studio license, and in this case, requires it to be where the object is deployed to. And the reason why is because we're actually using functions from within the IDE. So think of it, it's no different than if I were actually opening, opening up the IDE and doing development, I'm just doing it programmatically. That's why it requires a license. There are some great examples and samples on the product install under the documentation directory. And it should be also noted that from time to time API calls can change, so we need to use caution on this when we're lying. So a great example was I developed this in an older version of Orchestra System Platform, and when I imported it into the newer version, some of the methods had changed and I had to update my object. No big deal, just something to be aware of. So it's very easy to make this work. You can actually do this in about three steps. So step one is we need to download the API as highlighted under the download section. Then we need to install it by running the setup installer. Probably have to reboot after we do that. And then lastly, make sure that the script function library is in the target galaxy that you're going to be developing in. And one simple way to check this is to first just go into the galaxy menu and select export script function library, see if it's there. More than likely it's not there, so you'll have to actually import the DLL in. So why don't we take a look at what this object actually looks like. So I have an object called my object deployer that has some attributes on it called deploy it, destination object, and undeploy it. So they're really simple, they're just two booleans and a string. So basically you're going to give it the name of an object such as test object one, test object two, test object three, and then the operation you want to do, whether it's to deploy or undeploy. Not very complex in terms of scripting. So you can see that I've, up here in the declaration section, I've declared my variables for the documentation. And then down here, I have a expression that triggers this script and then sets it back to false. So I'll put the text of the script up uh, on, on the Knowledge Center, so if you want this script, uh, use at your own risk uh, because I've intentionally cranked mine down from security to make it easier. So I'm not going to go into all the specifics of, of what each one of the objects and methods do. They're pretty self-explanatory. The documentation does a good job of talking about what they are. But um, So basically you have to uh, instantiate an object, uh, connect to a GR, see which galaxies are there, tell it the galaxy name that you want, log in if you have security turned on and then this is where I set the options for what I'm going to do next which is the the deploy so you know if you're using 2014 R2 and you've got IntelliSense it makes it a lot easier so that's from what deploy looks like let's look at undeploy uh, not <laughs> much different just uh, you know basically the same thing but instead of uh, doing deploy we do it undeploy All right, so I split those up on purpose and I built a really simple graphic that just has a list box, a combo box control here, and the two buttons that allows us to either deploy or undeploy. So if we put it in runtime and you want to see what it looks like, notice here that I've got test object one, two, and three, which will correspond to this uh, combo box here. They're currently undeployed. So if I select test object three, which is already selected, and I select the deploy, we should see in a moment that the test object 3 will be deployed. So we can now see that test object 3 has been deployed. So it's not any faster than doing it through the IDE, but what it does allow you to do is programmatically control it. So, you know, if you needed to programmatically undeploy an object or redeploy an object, like the OPC client, I think I originally developed this for that purpose, it makes it much, much easier. And you can set the options for if I want to do a cascade deploy, things like that. I'm, I'm not doing any of that. I just sort of made a one-off, oops, one-off little object here to go do deployments and undeployments. And so 
I'm, of course, I'm showing you in touch here windowed, and then I'm showing you the deployment view over here in the IDE. Now we have all the objects deployed from in touch. So this is a simple little object. I'll upload it to the, again to the Knowledge Center with the scripting. Interested in learning more about our training tracks that we now offer? They are a great way to take the guesswork out of which class to take and when to take it. Check out the link below, and thanks for watching today.